Hey guys, hi everyone coming over from Mr. Ripper's channel. If you're here and this is the first video you're seeing, go over to Mr. Ripper's channel, he's got part one. We have Garbro doing the narration today because I think it just fits a wee bit better with his voice rather than mine. It's too Americana, yeah. it's too full, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, Garbro's a far better pick for us. Yeah. Or us, we, we dirty Yoru fans, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, it just doesn't fit very well for us, yeah. you know? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you at the end of the video. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Some folks say down Atlanta way, there's a place where folk go for learning. They call themselves Oogas or some shit. Have working power and a whole bunch of nerd shit. But there's tests to get in, right? And they're weird fucking tests. They do shit with dogs or something from what I heard. And apparently the Oogas have a working nuke plant in one of their satellite campuses. Border places they've got. I think it's fucking bullshit myself. Who'd run a nuke plant with all that happened? Y'all hear about what's happening middle of the Rockies? I keep hearing stories about the tribes of Deseret have united into some kind of confederation. Perhaps to stave off the Sioux horse lords from up north. Perhaps for economic gain. Well, it helps us, since that part of the interstate won't be blocked off by the tribe wars that were so common five years ago. Gather round, children, and throw another paddle on the trash fire. Long ago, there was a time when you could find food at a place called a store. If you wanted to eat, you didn't have to fashion a spear out of rebar and hunt giant rats in the middens. You just went up to a little window in the side of a building and the people would give you food at a price so low it was almost free. People back then counted calories just as we do, but they were worried about gaining weight. Indeed food was so easy to find that the poorest people in society were somehow also the fattest. I see the younger ones scoffing and shaking their heads. Tall tales from a rat addled old man, they say. But what would you say if I told you that clean, drinkable water came out of holes in the wall in every American household? That clean water was so cheap and plentiful, people bathed in gallons and gallons of it every day. That even with clean, flowing water in every home, people still went out and bought drinking water packed in plastic bottles. It was an age of lunatic excess. Oh, how I miss it so. Scavengers living in a zombie wasteland five years after the outbreak. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen out there? One guy talks about a time he hiked across Illinois to find a sanctuary. Sees a small town in the distance, some kind of tower rising from the center. Curious, heads for a closer look. What the fuck? The tower's made of filing cabinets, welded together in a four-story sniper's tower with a shack at the top. Cabinets are upside down, so that when you pull on the handles to climb up, they open and something falls out. Uh, bricks, glass, grenades. After trial and error, the guy manages to find the safe route up to the top. Finds a rotting body of a hoarder who got dysentery and shit himself to death. Legends from the green post-apocalypse setting for Anon's book. Gulf Coast fishermen of Texan, Cajun, Confederate, and Cuban nationalities all tell tales of a gray warship that stalks the waters of the Gulf. Hunting down all vessels not registered as belonging to the long dead United States of North America. Some say the vessel is possessed by the ghosts of its damned crew, while others believe it to be an exceptional experimental AI warship vessel designed to hunt down vessels of the Machine Lord Kaiser during the Machine Wars. While the idea of a ghost ship hunting down fishermen, oil tankers, and traders is laughable to landlubbers, the fact remains that every few months, 
a vessel disappears while in transit through the gulf. And all that remains is a wreckage bearing these scars of old world weapons and extreme prejudice. The Sabinites once declared war on the Empire of East Texas in retaliation for the extermination of their allies, the Witch Cults of Carthage. The Sabinites marched an army of over 45,000 men through the Wildwood Forest in an attempt to attack the Empire on its relatively unprotected flank. The army never exited the woods. To this day, wild tales and rumors are abound of dark, damned things that lurk in the woods, and the armies of shambling dead that march and dance behind them. Golgotha is a massive charred warscape in what was once Hempstead, the site of an incredibly bloody three-way battle between the forces of the USNA, Kaiser, and the Machine Lord Catherine. Almost five square miles of land is nothing but deep craters, bleached bone, and rusting war machines. Even though the war that created this scene of ruin ended almost a century and a half ago, it has not yet been picked clean by scavengers or by Cyprian or Republican salvage teams, much to the astonishment of those not familiar with the place. Those who live near it, though, only fear the place, for not all who reside there are truly dead. I do hope this Anon eventually finishes his book. It's from a long time ago, but it did sound pretty cool. There's rumors of a city of gold located somewhere in grassy plains. City with working electricity and cars. If one manages to travel across the states, they are set upon by fields of gold that surround the city. Truly a heaven. Now, y'all may not believe me. No one ever does. But I've seen the men you speak of. And their god what resides there in that cube. Now, I ain't never been looking for no trouble. But trouble's what I found that day. Raining it was. Hard raining. Kind of downpour that makes a man think it ain't the clouds, but God taking a piss right on you. So anywho, I trudged on and on through the pissing rain when I spied a house up on a hill, silhouetted by the lightning. As I trudged up, I seen a light inside and got low. Can't be too careful. So as I belly crawled, feeling more and more like I was making a big mistake. Normally, that'd be enough to turn me right around and hightail it out. But that light called me on, so I crawled right up to the front stoop and crept up to the window. Inside, I saw the cube, covered in guns, made of them, I say, all laid out like you could take your pick of the litter. Then, I seen them, clad in hodgepodge gear from all over, pre-war with some city miles on it. Each one of them standing around had on gas masks. One walked up with an old beat up 47 in his arms, cradled like a baby. He kneels and holds it out, head bowed as the others cycled their actions and started chanting. Now between the mask and the piss pouring rain and my own heart pounding, I couldn't hear the words, but I could feel them, feel them in my bones. Then, Something just reached out of that cube. A hand made of spent shells, old bolts, and knives gripped that rifle and pulled it into the cube. That's when I heard it. That click. Draw then rasping hiss of a mask right behind me. I turned slow, cursing myself for bagging my rifle to keep the rain out of it instead of fixing my bayonet. He was just standing there wearing the same as the others, and holding an old Mosin like mine. He looked me up and down, and held out a box of ammo for her. More than I'd seen since the bombs. I took him and ran. When I looked back, it was all just gone. Like it never was, at all. Hey boy, stop walking for a second look here. See that white line up there, boy? Streaks across every three days? 
That's the apocalypse come again. Or at least, will be. It's an automated war machine from before the fall. Don't you worry none, it's harmless now. Its sensors or its auto cannons are fried. Weren't so ten years past. Had to hide yourself if you saw it coming over the horizon. Why'd I call it that, you ask? Cause of its fiery heart that still beats. When its engines finally kill over you, not gonna wanna be five mile over that monster. So you adjust and keep a steady eye up there and start walking. I heard them folks in DC gave on trying to get the whole of the old states to vote for one president. So they just went and elected a demon. I don't joke about mutants. Was when I made the mistake of not moving. Me and the scavenger gal I traveled with made a community with some other folk. Managed to make a village at the bottom of a valley. A big hill in front of the main gate. When the moon was full, it would outline the hill clear as day. There were only seven of us then. Things were fine for a month or two. Almost had a decent farm going. Stone walls and a metal gate set up. One night I was on watch with a full moon against a hill. And I saw it. Standing on the crest. The outline of a giant of a man. The moon on his back. No element of stealth or care for subtlety. Everyone woke up and got their guns, and he, it, just stood there. Then Scav Girl whispered to me, asking what I thought it was. By the time I thought of a reply, it let out an inhuman yell, like a mouth sewn shut and trying to scream anyway as it charged down the hill. I gotta tell ya, me and three other men worked for weeks to make a perimeter of those stones and getting them mortared and secured, that solid metal front gate, and this thing charged into it once and ripped it from the hinges. It was taller than any man, arms as thick as tree trunks, looking down at me with this tight glare, small beady eyes. I shot its chest with a 12 gauge, and I don't think any of the pellets even broke his skin. Must have annoyed him though because he hit me in the side of the head hard enough to be unconscious, and I haven't been able to see out that eye since. When I woke up, the camp had been, I'd say ransacked, but that would be a lie. It didn't take any of our guns, none of our food, none of our water. Just came to kill. Blood soaked into the dirt, clothes strewn about, some with limbs still dressed in them, some limbs missing entirely. I tried identifying the pieces of my friends to no avail. Never found anything belonging to the scavenger girl, though. It took her. Was too afraid to try and follow and find out why. I've seen the devil. And he is a mutant. You heard about the great lynx that live in the tall emerald browns in the lush of the northwest? Said the guide, warming his hands by the fire trying to start a conversation. The great trees surrounding them seem to only make the night darker under their vast canopies. Great lynx? The traveler asked warily. Forgot you boys from the south and east of the stones don't know much up here. The trader coughed as he inhaled the fumes of the hastily prepared fire. See, they say they existed before the Great Fall. I forget the term they used for them. Uh, squatch, I think. Never mind. Great hairy men that live in the woods, you see. Yeah, I guess. He too warmed his hands by the fire. His ratty gloves made it hard to stay warm from a southern journey north. He made a note to buy a new pair when they reached Vallis. Well, I've heard rumors about a military base. Everyone here knows some story about people disappearing in a military base or some shit. So, let me talk at least, I swear. This one's true. Whatever you say, Rob. Now listen, there's a base somewhere between Nevada and Cali. You know how every military site that hasn't been looted is radioactive? Or how some bloody horrible thing resides in it, right? Yeah, and? Well, 
This one is, or at least looks, completely safe. No mutagens, no activity for miles around. The radiation is basically non-existent. The only traces come from a nearby test site. Now, I'm quite sure you remember how looting ops work. Checking the perimeter, fully armed and trying to stay low. Yeah, so? You'll undoubtedly walk for a bit, and you won't notice anything. Then your brain will make a connection or two and see that there are a lot of round holes around you. Holes with dark borders. But you're probably just being paranoid. After all, the thirst can make you quite twitchy, can it? I know a thing or two about dehydration, so yeah. What if you walk some more? The holes become more numerous, then suddenly stop appearing. You carry on and advance with your group, right towards the entrance. It looks quite sturdy, and you don't think there's a good way of breaking in. Then your friend Pat has an idea. Maybe if you do this, and this, and that, you can get in. Your blokes do as he says, and it works. The door opens perfectly, and what a pile of treasure there is. Treasure. Guns everywhere, ammo, grenades, bulletproof armor, even food, enough to feed a town for weeks. Well, looks good. Indeed it is. That is, until you remember that Pat got shot back in Colorado by some bandits. And you notice that Jack is talking to his mate Andy, who got shanked by a mutant in Iowa. Wait, what? You ask Pat how on earth he got here, and he suddenly crumbles to dust. And behind what used to be Pat, you see a camera pointing at you, staring through your soul with its lenses. And then you notice the smell of death, foul enough to make a man wretch at the mere thought. You see the bodies, mutilated beyond recognition, rotting on the floor, and then the drones come. Who even has working drones in this world? I'm afraid we're better off not knowing. The drones advance silently and then let out terrific screams when they see you. They start following you with their guns and their chainsaws. Rev up. You try to ascend, running for your life. The apparently pristine corridors are caked with blood, with limbs occasionally seen littered on the floor. A head or two can be spotted, manic terror forever frozen on their rotting faces. Then, you finally ascend with the robots hot on your heels. Occasional gunfire or roars followed by pain screams can be heard. Jack managed to stay behind you. The gate is still open, but corpses are stacked on its sides. You don't care, however, and just run past it. The drones stop. However, when you start slowing down, rays start raining from the sky, charring the sand. Running past the craters, and you notice charred remains belonging to more unfortunates. Jack joins them when a ray hits him, completely ripping him apart. And when the rays stop, when you look behind you to see what kind of abomination smote all your friends, you notice a gray figure standing before the gate, pointing at you. As it stares with its soulless eyes, you can't seem to stop thinking that you managed to escape simply because it let you. Well... That's it for me, guard bro. Why don't you take it on home, Nick Beardia? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you still haven't checked out part one, links are down below to go over and check Mr. Ripper's channel for part one. And if you enjoyed guard bro's narration, he does stranded and fantasy on our channel, but he also has his own channel, Nick. No, guard beardy. Oh no, <laughs> I can't pronounce.
like to, it's Garbiria Beardio. Yes. Yeah. Go check him out. He's got he does a lot of cool stuff over in his channel. It's as a lot well. of he, he writes his own stuff for the most yeah. part, so it's all original shit. Stuff you're not gonna find anywhere else. Cause you know, a lot of these channels we do overlap on a lot of stories sometimes, you know, and it just happens whereas his stuff, it's all completely original, so it's definitely something, you know, worth checking out. I think it's worth it. And if you're new here, go and check the playlists for Green Tech Stories, DT Stories, or go and subscribe to my channel when you're there. Just <laughs> put that the plug in. Channels. <laughs> All right, okay, we're gonna we're gonna shell that shell. <laughs> yo, yo, guys, all right, we got we got 3D printed models. We got like three fucking channels. We got it all! We got it all! Okay, no, this is getting better. Huh? <laughs> okay, that's like, I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> Remember, if you did enjoy this one and you haven't, just go check out Mr. Ripper's part one. And I think we'll just leave it there, will we? Yeah. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next video.